to scale, Fun With Scales video number five. And having looked at lots of major scales, major arpeggios, minor scales, and a whole tranche of ways to practice those, today we're looking and talking about the chromatic scale. The chromatic scale, the scale that moves in semitones. There's 12 tones within the scale, and they all move up in half steps and back down in half steps. The easiest way to think about it is by pressing every key on a piano keyboard and moving up half a step each time. Now most people have learnt one or two chromatic scales, perhaps you've learnt them for an exam, um, and usually people can play a chromatic scale across one or two octaves of their instrument starting on a specific note. Um, so perhaps you've learnt a, a one octave chromatic scale starting on a concert B flat, which would be my G on my alto saxophone. <laughs> chromatic scale somewhere on their instrument. But what I want to talk about is recognising that there is actually only one chromatic scale, right from the lowest note all the way up to the highest note. And all the other scales are part of that giant scale and we just start the scale wherever we want within it and we're utilising the same notes. The chromatic scale doesn't imply a key signature used to colour music. Often when we see a chromatic scale written it can look quite complicated on the music. You think, goodness me, what on earth is that with all those accidentals? And then when we come to analyse it more we find it's just a chromatic scale or part of a chromatic scale. Perhaps it's from an A to an E flat and we're just moving chromatically between. So it's very important when we're reading music we recognise these patterns and it takes a lot less time to learn music and helps us become better sight readers. Um, one easy spot is that when you see an ascending chromatic scale it will always go in, up in sharps and when you see a descending chromatic scale that should be written going down in flats. When you play your chromatic scales you should really think in sharps on the way up and think in flats on the way down. So that may mean that you have to think very carefully about your enharmonic equivalence. So if I was, for example, to play that concert B flat chromatic again, which is a G on my alto saxophone. So I'm starting on a G and I go up in sharps. G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, and G. Once I'm at the top of the scale, as I come down, I think in flats. G, G flat, F, E, E flat, D, D flat, C, B, B flat, A, A flat, and G. And I'll try and think that as I play the scale. <laughs> scales within the music and it's also the correct way to write those scales if you're writing them out and composing. Um, as I said earlier most people can play a chromatic scale from one or two notes from their instrument. What I'd encourage you to do is try playing a chromatic scale perhaps over an octave from each note of a chromatic scale. So to give me a bit more headroom and lower end on my instrument I'm going to start on the lower part of the saxophone, on a C for me, and I'm going to play a chromatic scale one octave from my low C. While I'm happy I can do that, I'll then take the next semitone from the scale I've just played. So it's a chromatic scale, it's going up in half steps, started on C, the next note I played was C sharp, so I'm now going to play a chromatic scale from C sharp. Up another semitone from the same scale I played first, this is now up to D. Keep moving that up in semitones. 
descending then around the cycle of fifths and the cycle of fourths and of course try it with a metronome don't do anything above your speed limit make sure you're playing accurately rather than quickly it's very important to play things right first rather than speeding through these kind of exercises once you've got all your chromatics under your fingers you'll find that a lot of small chromatic passages appear in music often from the third degree to the fifth degree of a chord Okay, and that'll allow you to spot those patterns, but you can also try playing small segments of chromatic scales within your instrument. So if I was thinking about um, some chord changes, perhaps I could take again the cycle of fifths, C, G, D, the first three. I could play chromatically just a small section, maybe between the third degree of the chord and the fifth degree. And you can hear that pattern there. And that's something you can develop if you feel you're very um, slick on your chromatics already. You can think of new ways of practicing them. Okay. Um, once you've mastered that, of course, you'll be straight on to flight of the bumblebee. And you can practice that in all 12 keys. Hey. So there we are. There's a little bit of uh, chromatic ideas for you today. Well worth taking away and having a practice of. Practice them on your instrument and your key. Um, start where it's suitable for you on your instrument. And um, I hope you enjoy working on a few of the ideas I've presented to you there. If you'd like to have more of a chat or learn more about chromatics or elements of effective practice, drop me a line at philshopmusic.co.uk. Hope you're all keeping well and I'll see you again next time.